It's time for Twig. This week in Google, we're going to talk about cookies. Yes, third-party cookies and why they're good for you, bad for you, good for you, bad for you. We can't figure out our minds either. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 136, recorded February 29th, Leap Day 2012. It's a polar bear. This Week in Google is brought to you by Ting.com. Ting gives you big savings and billing clarity for mobile phone service. Try their online savings calculator and save $50 on your device purchase at ting.com slash twig. This is Twig This Week in Google, the show that covers Google, the Internet, the cloud, the Facebook, the Twitter, and all of that jazz. Gina Trapani is here from smarterware.org and uh, the author of the ThinkUp app at thinkupapp.com. Great to have you, Gina. Happy Leap Day. Happy Leap Day, the 29th. I'm not wearing blue and yellow today, but Leap Day Where did that come from? Leap Day Williams, 30 30 Rock. 30 Rock, yeah. Yes. Um, Disappointment. So that show aired a few days ago, and already (laughs) blue and yellow is it. Yep. It's like become like it's in stone. Any minute I'm going to sprout gills and, (laughs) you know. And 10 years from now, people wear blue and yellow, and they won't know why. Actually, it'll be 12 years from now. (laughs) They won't know why. It was an actual. It was an excellent cultural commentary on absurd <laughs> holiday <laughs> figures and rituals and customs. <laughs> I missed it. I didn't see it, and I still know about it. It's a, <laughs> it's really fascinating. There you go. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Jarvis is also here. The author of What Would Google Do? His newest book is called Public Parts. He uh, blogs at BuzzMachine.com and teaches journalism at the City University of New York. Hello, Jeff. And I have a new venture. Ah. ah. Yes. I downloaded mine, but I haven't had a chance to read it. This is a little bitty book. It's a Kindle single, only a buck, folks. I, I want, um, I'm want. i number 12 on the Kindle single list. Yay! Because just like you guys got me up higher in the debate over privacy. Come on, Twig Nation. Come on. It's only 99 cents. <laughs> uh, so what's in this the, book? It argues that it's not a book. It's just an e-book. It's just 6,000 words. It argues that Gutenberg was the original technology entrepreneur that he went through all the same challenges that a technology entrepreneur goes through today, uh, solving technology problems, uh, developing in secret, and then later he became more open source, uh, putting together a team, finding capital, finding customers, and and he was done in in the end by his cash flow and his cap table. But (laughs) even so, he obviously disrupted the world in a way that we all uh, hope to do today, and uh, I think he's the patron saint of Silicon Valley, and that's what I argue. Wow. That sounds great. 6,000 words. 6,000 words. And it's selling all right, it sounds like. It's no more than a typical twig rant from me. So, you is know. It, <laughs> is, so is it a, is it a profit deal? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'll be, you know. It's whatever. all profit, I guess, isn't it? It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, 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 you know, Kindle Single was actually very easy to deal with. They said last week, okay, we'll go with it. Within a week, it was copy edited. Oh, so you have copy. to get them. Who is they? Uh, Amazon? Get Amazon. Amazon, yeah. So and do they do the copy? Copy? Oh, okay. And do they do they the, copy? the copy editing? And they created the cover. And um, uh, that I was like it. the cover. It was very easy, very pleasant. And they take what? What percentage? They take thirty percent, just like Apple. Yeah. yeah. Neato. Well, uh, you sent me a coupon, so I can't say I bought it. Uh, but maybe I'll just buy another one. No, 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 no. I can't though, because I've turned off third-party cookies, and I can't log it. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jeff. Is this your first self-published? Um... Yeah, I wanted to learn how. I mean, I, it also says whenever people say, "Well, you're against paywalls, Jarvis. You think content has no value?" I said, well, I'll sell you this too. You know, I'll, I'll, I want to learn about it. I want to try it. I'm, I'm, look, we're all going to have paywalls soon, and uh, and I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could say. I'm, I'm referring to an earlier conversation, which was not recorded and had nothing to do with coffee. So don't get all excited. It's a world of first parties only. I am sad that I did not go to Barcelona for many reasons. Yes. But Mobile World Congress has been amazing, including a keynote from our fearless leader, Eric Schmidt. 
I don't. I can't remember him. He doesn't usually do keynotes. He uh, does mobile. He, he did a mobile event in uh, or a technology and mobile event in Germany some time ago. He does them on these kinds of industry events, which would surprise you, but he does do them occasionally. It was good. I thought that was very good. <laughs> now, according to Stephen Shanklin, running writing uh, for CNET, he says the summary of uh, Eric's speech is: "With the internet, the weak will be made strong, unless dictators try to keep too much control." Is that a fair? I didn't watch it. Is that a fair? Synopsis. Well, it's not a synopsis. He obviously showed off Android and everything else. But yeah, I think I think morally, it's a synopsis that says, "Beware, people." It's the same discussion we don't want to have again that we were just having about regulation of things like cookies <laughs> and uh, third parties. We can, uh, you can talk. I'm just not going to say a word. Uh, I'm, I'm over the end. I, I, I'm I'm my, over my, the my 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 bottom is still sore. <laughs> I do not I want, want no more video. spanking. I please. don't want to know any more about that. Uh, uh, but but what? So he was warning against regulation today that you think has this impact that in fact has another impact and um so yeah i, I think that, that that was the moral message here but he was really also being terrible you know it, it's it's he's he's a technology optimist even more than i am talking about self-driving cars and how it's going to save unbelievable numbers of lives and how robotics will make a difference and how more data will be helpful in our lives and and this goes to the conversation we were having before the show started that it is up to, Gina was saying, up to media and advertising to show the benefit of cookies. Um, and it's up to, I think, technology companies like Google to show the benefit of what they do in creating new technology. And if they don't, people are going to continue to be scared of it. I'm not sure that um, extolling a highly optimistic, some would say utopian future, is necessarily going to be credible with everybody who's scared. But I still think it's worthwhile saying if you if you tamp down here, folks, this is what you may give up. You know, it's funny. I used to be afraid uh, for the net because of big companies, net neutrality, and companies like Comcast and other uh, stakeholders trying to the record industry, the movie industry, trying to kill the net because they saw it as a threat to their business model. Now I realize what's going to kill the net. It's its users. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm you stunned. thought you were in trouble before, Leo. I am stunned. No, I mean, really, I, I, I truly believe that this uh, knee-jerk terror over tracking is wow. it, is going to, yeah, no, I think it's going to really be a problem because it just makes it impossible to create the free stuff that we create. Amen. You, well, so you brought it up, Leo. Let that be clear here. Uh, yes, I agree. Absolutely. I think that's the danger is that we're, we're getting into a moral panic over technology and we're acting as if it's big companies doing it and yes some of them are and yes they do boneheaded things but we have to be concerned about the unintended consequences of the impact on the tools that we so love and depend upon and the freedom that that brings but I, I think my issue is i don't think people understand technology pretty much at all you know most people uh, people watch right. this show do but most people do not understand technology at all and uh so this is so complicated of a subject that even we who do have a difficult time explaining it and understanding it. I despair of normal people getting it. And the easy headline, the easy takeaway is uh, Google tracked you on the iPhone and that's it. Done. That's all you need to say. And that's forever in people's minds and it's over. Leo, one of, one of the most amazing, well, I think, I think the, not amazing, one of the things that really fits in with that argument in what um, uh, Eric Schmidt said was that he basically said, I'm trying to find it here because before some other earlier, uh, technology will disappear, it will just be there, right? which is part of the view. So, so the, we don't have to know about it, it's underneath everything. But when you're afraid of technology, when it seems mysterious, when you don't know what it does, that's perhaps the wrong way to go. Because then people get more frightened of what they don't know. Right. Now, Gina is of the opinion that the media companies, is like, this is what Eric Schmidt did, but, you know, he's preaching to the converted when he's standing on a stage at Mobile World Congress. But uh, it, it, you think, Gina, that if that Eric needs to do more of this, that everybody needs to explain this. Uh, and Is that going to solve it? I mean, I think being clear about what you're doing, what the what the benefits you can't of be. shared and aggregate data is. You I can't mean, be because it's too it's too complicated and technical a subject. People don't get Je it. Jeff's book, Public Parts, um, just straight up plug. I mean, he's doing the good work of saying, hey, well, these are these are the benefits of living publicly, putting your data out there, sharing data. I think th things like Flickr, you know, defaulting to public, it, 
tools that default the public and the benefit that we get out of those things. I think it's important to tell those stories, to counteract the, the moral panic stories. Uh, I think Google, with their privacy policy consolidation, which goes into effect tomorrow, is in a really good position to say, look at this huge suite of products that we have, and now that we can share data, you've agreed to let us share behavioral data between them, look at the value we can provide you, right? So they're in a really good position to, to show that. Um, and, I, you know, I do think... <laughs> I do think it's about telling telling a better story. I think that it's in the media company's best interest to just be transparent and upfront about the fact that if they're offering free content, you know, you're the product, <laughs> not them. You know, this this idea that if you're, if you're using right. a free service, then you're, you're handing over your information and we're providing value. It's a fair trade. I mean, I think that there, there are a lot of people who aren't technologists who look at free services, look at like Facebook and think, how is this free? How is this company worth so much money and it's free? You know, why do I get to use this thing for free? We have to stop telling the free story and just be honest. You, what, it's it isn't free. free. You give your information <laughs> right. and they provide a communication service. And that and that is a and, and it's a really it's a fair trade and it's beneficial in a lot of ways. Um, so I, I just and, and, you know, this is what we do on the show. This is what Jeff did with his book. And I, I, I have more hope about it. Leo, it sounds like you've had a rough week. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I have hope that we can turn this around and that we can tell the story in, 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 in a way that's not overly technical, but just be, be more upfront about the idea that if you're not paying for a service, then you are then you are the product. Maybe that's not such a great way to put it. But just, just get people used to the idea that sharing your information, if you share your information, then you get these benefits and then you get to use these tools. If you don't want to share information, then about. you don't get to use the tools. That's right. not going to work. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> People you know, want Facebook. They want it for free. They have no idea that it costs money. They don't understand that a server costs money. They have no idea. But I think there's some uneasiness about it. I think this is where the moral panic comes from. You know, like there's some uneasiness. People who don't understand technology are like, they love Facebook. They don't really understand why it's free. You know, they're going to see these stories about the IPO and gazillions of dollars it's going to involve. And, and it's sort of, I think it's just this like big mystery to folks. Well, and then what uh, happens because of the moral panic is uh, the thing that Google did, which I agree was wrong on iOS, is because of the moral panic. Because Google considered saying, well, uh, we want this information and realized that people would uh, say, you know, they would be freaked out. So the engineer in them said, well, we're really not doing anything bad. We're just uh, going to set this plus one button. So let's just do it. And I think what you're going to see is two things will happen. So there's going to be this moral panic. Uh, companies will try to sneak more because you can't, I'm telling you, you can't say, hey, we just want to track you for advertising purposes to give you a free service. People go, what the hell with that? It's like if, it, you know, look, at this doesn't affect us. Uh, Twit doesn't use third-party tracking cookies. It literally does not affect us. But if somebody started, if everybody started using ad blockers, that would affect us, right? So uh, I, I could think in, the, in my head of, of that. People just, everybody uses ad blockers. You say, but wait a minute, it's a free service. You use ad blockers. We can't do it. Uh, people say, well, let's, you know, figure out a way because we're going to use it and we're going to use ad blockers. And then the companies do figure out a way. They sneak around. Then government gets into it. And now we're really in trouble. Right. right. And I think that's exactly what's happening kind of right now. Yep. Anyway, I moving so. on. At one point, Google considered having its own currency. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Facebook's already doing this. Yeah, isn't Facebook doing this? Yes. They've got those kind of those cards. I, I've not, seen them in like Not Target the same way Google was. Google was going to do a, like a Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer -peer money system. Currency. Oh, and, and Eric said the reason that the reason the reason they chose not to was not because of technology or logistics. It was because it's illegal and governments fear it because they wouldn't have control. And and people could just have exchange on their own and governments don't like that. And oh, uh, governments hate it. that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just take a moment and say, how cool would a Google-backed Bitcoin be? How cool would a Google-backed Bitcoin be? Wouldn't be so cool. They were, they were going to call on. them Google Bucks. Your Google Bucks. I think they should have called uh -huh. them Googs or something else. But uh, Now, I should warn everybody that if Google did that, it would be to make money. <laughs> just so you understand, <laughs> they didn't do it. They, didn't, they, didn't, they wanted to do it not because they were nice people, but because they wanted to make some money. Damn. We you need a vacation. Damn them. <laughs> Can I uh, show you a nice video from Barcelona? Maybe Please, cheer me up. Yeah, here's yeah, a sm here's 
mobile. Look at this is they do it outside, which is kind of cool. Or <laughs> at least partly booth. outside. So some of it's outside, some of it's inside, I guess. There's a robot, cheery little robot. How could that be bad? But it gets better. They're making, they're making, oh. Plushy androids. Yeah. Oh, we want, we Smoothies. want. Smoothies. <laughs> There's oh. ice cream sandwiches, too. You see, this is exactly how they subvert you. I just want to warn I know. you. This is they how I got into the cult. They make you think they're nice people with fuzzy <laughs> little robots, and then they make money off of you. They're greedy capitalists. Oh, Leo really is. Man, this <laughs> is not fun <laughs> to Leo. <laughs> Let's start singing the international, Leo. What if I, I got to find the ice cream myself. sandwich? You're all a bunch of commies. No, no. There's ice cream sandwiches in here. Wow. What about jelly beans? Uh, well, there was a jelly bean photo in a private meeting. I really regret not uh, going this year because this, this is this is clearly where this is where the rubber meets the road in technology is, and I think next year we'll have to be at Mobile World Congress. Well, that was that was Eric's main point too. Is that we're we're just at the point where, um, uh, you know. Two billion people are on are connected to the internet. There's seven billion people in the world. There's so much growth to go. They're going to come on through what we now would call smartphones, but we'll call something else. And, you know, an Android in every pocket. And that's where he's headed. And it's about connectivity. Yes, and then making money as a result. Well, of course, but- it's uh, Jason Sparrow, who's head of mobile sales. Sales, folks. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> who said that a, I cannot take you here today. <laughs> who said that a billion people will be using mobile as their number one way to get online by 2012. Primary method this year. Yeah. A yeah. billion people. Yeah. There's no such thing as mobile. Mobile's just mobile just where we're always going to be mobile. It's, it's the future. Where we are. It's connecting. But here's yeah. the other problem. It's going to know where you are. <laughs> well, that's and I think that that really is a big issue with mobile is that these things really are spy devices. They've got GPS built in. I mean, f- f- tracking cookies is like so 1990. This stuff, this stuff really knows exactly where you are, and people you like know a, where you ate pizza. Dennis and we Crowley know what you had on it. Did, did, you know, Dens is talking at Mobile World Congress. The guy who started Foursquare, he wants to do a new Foursquare that lights up a map wherever you are. You look at this map, and it shows all the things that Foursquare recommends, all the places your friends have been. In fact, they've got an NFC chip now that instead of checking in, and this actually is going to be critical to the success of Foursquare. You just tap your phone against the NFC thing, and it says, "I'm here." And, uh, and if we could just get everybody to do that, then we could really make some money. <laughs> but seriously, this is the benefit you get from all that tracking is that now you know where your friends have been, what places yeah. they like. Um, but it, there's tracking involved. So I, I, I wonder if this uh, sudden um, – uh, uh, it feels like puritanism, this sudden, sudden puritanical privacy uh, concern – is going to just kind of make all this stuff shrivel up. I mean, you need there's a trade. You get some benefits from this, and That's, mobile is absolutely critical in all of this. Not I, just media. I hate, I hate to plug and make money because of it, but that's exactly <laughs> why I wrote the book. That's exactly what I feared. That it's not about the, 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 the privacy is important and it's worthy and it needs protection and we all have it and there's nothing wrong with it, but it is being used as a guise to come in and regulate the technology. Same as piracy, security, decency, civilization in the case of Sarkozy. These are all guises of why governments are trying to come in and regulate the net. And we're falling into a trap, people. We're falling into a terrible trap. Hmm. Uh, next. <laughs> Gina, Gina goes, hmm, I'm, I'm on a show with two crazy men. <laughs> uh, no, you know, no, it's funny. You know, I, I, Jeff and I have, have different, you know, Jeff really is, is like, he's slowly changing my mind from week to week. I just, I feel that I need to represent I, I, the, the, the technologists. And these aren't people that don't understand what's going on. I mean, this is our audience. If you look what's going on in the chat room, this is our audience. Oh, yeah. These people that know oh, what's yeah. up. Yeah. That feel really wary about these things. And I, my default setting is to feel wary about these things. And I think that comes from two things. I'm a woman and I've had a crazy guy sending me crazy emails for three, three or four years. So Google's I think, not a person. Right. Now, I understand. I understand this is a human using tools. Yeah. I'm just saying that before I broadcast where I am, I think of this crazy guy. Right. Uh, well, I understand you know, that. And I think that that's life. part of this is that biologically we conflate. Uh, a, a reader that's scanning your email with a human being reading your email. It isn't really reading your email, what Google's right. doing, right? But right. we conflate that because biologically that's the, all we understand. 
Right, of and course. And even but... technologists conflate that. I mean, you're a technologist. Yes, and, that's true. And you that's use the true. word read my email. I'm not reading your email. But pe there are people who run those servers, and there are people who they set up the security could, around those servers. And so there's always email. the issue of not not only uh, unintentional data leaks. If I opt into Google Latitude and it's kind of automatically, you know, and I opt into it automatically broadcasting my location, you know, that's something that. But why didn't uh, you worry about that when you were using email for the last ten years, sending it through a not multiple anonymous servers, un unencrypted? I, I think about email like sending a postcard. Any. Any server that it goes through, I just assume that it can be, you know, that there's a copy made and that it can be published. I so mean, that, this is not new. You, no, this is you no, use is, the internet, is, and you're in effect in public. Yes, uh, yes. To to the some extent, if, that, if what you're worried about is malicious spying, mm -hmm. and actually Google's done the work of the angels by putting HTTPS on all of that traffic. Yes. So, uh, in fact, only Google can read your email, not anybody in the middle. <laughs> Only that right. bad engineer, only that guy, uh, Code Monkey at Google, can read it. When I feel victimized on the net, it's because of people. It's because right. of dorks, idiots, a holes, people. Right, but uh, did you, you guys saw the, the New York Times article about how Target can can mm -hmm. build up a profile yeah. of consumers, and so. So I feel uncomfortable with the idea that Target knows that I'm pregnant before my parents do. <laughs> By the way, fascinating <laughs> you know I mean? story there because that was not the headline that the New York Times used on its very well thought out. I think he was nine months writing that piece and it got very little traffic. But when mm -hmm. the was it the Washington Post, Jeff, who was it that republished it with that headline? Tar uh, it was Forbes. Forbes. They got all the Back traffic. The they got all the traffic. This guy did this really wonderful article. And all the traffic went to the sensational headline, not the actual right. article. Well, I mean, that's just an unfortunate. Jeff, but when you but it underscores, no, there's a reason I brought that up. It underscores that there's a sensationalism there. The truth is that, that people like Target do it all the time, and they do it without the Internet. Um, they do it in a variety of ways. Well, through your club card, right? Your club I mean, card, they habits. track when you Same call idea. them for help. They Because you have a Target ID, and they're aggregating every bit of information every time you identify yourself to them of every kind of activity and it's it, it has been happening long before the internet marketers have always done this i can remember very well uh 25 years ago um a guy sh there was a great book in fact i should try to find this book where they just showed everything they know about you from where you live you know from your zip code i could tell you what magazines you subscribe to because people flock in the same group it's, right. it's not hard to get all this information without tracking cookies or anything else and it's been uh, done I've for told years the story of have I told on Axiom? Have I told this on the show before? If you, if I have stopped me, you can go to Axiom today, and you can request and pay for the names and addresses of. And I'll really creep you out here, Gina. I can find oh women, um, single, uh, twenty to thirty-five, within two miles of my house, who are college educated, who earn at least this much. I can get their names and addresses, not because of the internet but because of pre-internet databases that exist. Right, right. And, and, I, and we go back to use and harm versus technology and gathering, right? The use right. here is if you use that to become a masher, well, that's the problem. Um, the harm is what could go wrong. But the fact that this data exists has been there for ages, right? Why absolutely. are we suddenly in this moral panic? Because we're scared of technology as a society. Which is I think it's because we just we want con we want control. Right, so so when you got your your diagnosis, you said you, you were public about it, right? But you said that you were not public about it until you had spoken to Jake about it, your son, right? Yes. yes. How would you have felt? I, I mean, so your doctor knew. I, I mean, there were there were certain you know your medical record oh, definitely. records. I would, it was I, there. I wanted that control. Yes, absolutely. If, and if Jake and had found no out, no one should lose that control. I don't think anyone right. should be forced out of the cancer closet. Absolutely not. Right. Right. Right? What right. I argue instead is, A, if one is generous enough, and I believe it is an act of generosity, to be open about it, benefits mm -hmm. come. B, I, I, I argue I completely agree. that apart from the obvious cases uh, that are legislative of our societal behavior of um, uh, employment and insurance, and apart from our own stigmas, there's no actual harm. There shouldn't be a harm in society of saying you're sick. There shouldn't be. There so I argue shouldn't that be. there shouldn't be right. So what I'm arguing is if we're going to examine ourselves as a society, if we're going to fear things, I think we should fear the fact that we have a stigma against people who are sick. It's medieval. 
And that's what we should be examining and changing in society. That's true. That's true. But right now, if you're if you're a woman who has a, a career and you're trying to get pregnant, you know, that's something you try to hide because you don't want people Ooh, to know that because right, that can affect right. your career. You exactly. If you're, if yes. you're a high school and, you, and you're, a, you know, gay, uh, that's something you want to try to hide because there's a stigma. So, well, what's excuse me, so I mean, so we do society. have to separate technology from society. What I'm saying is that there are totally legitimate reasons why you want to keep things private. And I think that the idea yes. that there's technology that people don't really quite understand, uh, that that could mean that they don't have control over protecting those things about their lives, you know, that can affect them in a bad way is, is what freaks people out. Uh, but but, I, but I, I understand it's important to separate those things. I think it's really, I'm really grateful that you wrote the book. I am out of the closet because I believe that it benefits people to be pu- public about things that are, are pretty, I mean, to me is private. Uh, but but I, but I think you have to acknowledge like the fear around this kind well, of automatic I do. I do. data, yeah, data I, sharing and what the, where that comes from. But, like, but, but what Leo is saying, I think, Gina, is that, is that we also have to not be carried away with that fear when it is a fear that, is, that it says I'm uncomfortable or I'm creeped or things like that, that we have to deal with the specific harm and the balance that we are making, especially when that balance affects technologies in more ways than we will admit right now. And this is what Eric Schmidt was saying. Watch out, folks. You're going down a road. And he said, in a few years, you're going to regret it. You're mm-hmm. going to regret that you let government come in and control the technology, the actual technology and how it operates because of right. the present fear. That's mm-hmm. the issue. Uh, I'm trying to find here. I've, I quoted a blog today that was uh, a guy named um, Tanta. Uh, at, and I'm not going to find it right away. Uh, let me see if I get the... Uh, da, 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 da. He talked about how... Yeah, here it is. That that we we are... Um, that we have a, a, a weird view of privacy now and that we've got to look uh, differently at it. We, we have a broken idea of privacy, he argues. Uh, and it's gay bar, gay, the hyphen gay hyphen bar dot com. And, and it's a wonderful post about this. And at the end... <laughs> Um, you know, he says that if, if Galileo had kept his ideas secret, then, you know, because he had fear, what would have happened? Where would we be if no homosexual ever out of themselves, stepping into the public light, uh, in, endangering not only their social status, but also drawing a lot of hate and rejection their way? People would probably still claim that being gay was a normal or abnormal. Um, uh, privacy is not your brave protector. It is a, it's an invisibility potion, he says. It means that nobody can see you, your ideas, your thoughts, your feelings. It not only means that you cannot be heard, it also means that your voice, your words, your actions cannot give courage, inspiration, and hope to so many people on this planet who might need it. You have every right to privacy. Nobody should be forced to say something that they want to keep secret. But the privacy based on hidden by default approach is a danger to us as a society. I think it's very well said, and that's the moral of what I'm trying to say. If privacy is important, I will not force you out, but let's also recognize the benefit of having the courage and the benefit not to be. And the main reason we choose to be so scared and hold in is because we're scared of the unknown. Well, Galileo was That's... right to be scared. He was almost burned yeah. at the stake. He, he, he was. Good on, yeah, Jeff, good you on and him. I agree a lot more than it seems. Uh, yes, we... But, I, but this, these conversations are always extreme, very useful to me to help, as I said well, on Twitter, back, to help you know, kind of particularly. Obviously, I'm not doing a good job of getting, in, you know, <laughs> no, but I'm serious, of getting into this conversation and places like policy centers and places like that, that, that it, there's a steamroller going on in here. And I haven't figured out how to stand in front of it in a way that doesn't just say, ah, um, because, I, because I'm not grappling with the kinds of fears and concerns that you're talking about very well. And I, and I know that. And, I, and, I, and I'm somewhat at wit's end to try to find that bridge that says, but hold on, folks. Yeah, I understand this, but there's also that. And I haven't done right. a good job of it, so it's very useful for me too to have these conversations. I think you've done a pretty done a good job in the book. I think more people have to read the book. I think that's the moral story. More <laughs> and people make have to read me money. <laughs> Listen, I'm a full on capitalist. I have apps in the app store. I charge money. <laughs> I used to be a hippie commie. Now I'm a complete capitalist. So I'm all for it. <laughs> Buy Jeff's book. <laughs> uh, Jeff, uh, I'm sorry, not Jeff. Uh, Andy. Ruben, writing uh, in the Google, Google Mobile blog, or the Google Mobile blog, says <laughs> that 850,000 new Android devices are activated every single day. The total number of Android devices, I don't know if I buy this, but this is what he says, in the world are 300 million. Holy cow. 
450,000 apps, a billion app downloads happening every month. Now, remember, Apple's about to cross 25 billion, but I think Android's pretty darn close and uh, growing very, very quickly. There are 100 plus Android devices on display at Mobile World Congress. Oh, is that good or bad? That, isn't that interesting? That he says there have 800 plus devices have launched since Android came out. A hundred of them are new at, at, at Mobile World Congress today. Uh, wow. Yeah, Android's not, doing well. Android's that doing is. okay. He's doing well. I, I, that's a good question, though, whether or not all those devices is is a is a good thing. Uh, it well, very Google much is like Google a paradox must, of choice. Sometimes. Google must feel so. They want to. They're now going to release their own tablet, as if we didn't have enough. Well, we don't have the right one yet. I would say. <laughs> well, do we don't. We don't have the right one. Well, yet. Will there Google, really isn't a good Android tablet. Will a Google tablet uh, change that? I I don't think the Galaxy so. Nexus, for instance, is the best Google phone out there right now. Is it? No, and it's a pure Google experience. I don't think it's even close. Well, Eileen, Eileen, that's your cue. Come on in, Eileen. Oh no, she agrees with me. It's she does. Oh. I yeah, I, I she do doesn't agree. even use the Nexus. No, uh, what's if, the best? If phone I would uh, get a phone right now, it might be HTC the, One. Well, that's not available yet. That in that's April. Be awesome. But if I were to get a phone today, I would probably go with the Droid Razor Max. Because you want battery life. I want battery and, life, and, and see, it's awesome. That's what's different between her and me. She is all about battery life. I'm all about screen size. And the point is, we have a choice. That's right. And when I can, you get old, young lady, you'll have the same problem we you have. You want a big screen. But see, I don't care about battery life because I have right. five now. Count them, five <laughs> batteries for this thing. And I keep them all charged. I keep them in my pocket. I keep them in my glove compartment. I keep them in my desk. And if I need more juice, I just put in a new battery and I get, a, Leo, actually, I get about eight hours or nine hours. So it's not like I'm... Have you talked to your shrink about this, Leo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said it. Yes, I did. As a matter this morning, he said, "Can I borrow one? Because my phone is." <laughs> that I do wish they'd standardize on the batteries, though. That would yeah. be that would save me money. We actually had a really good conversation about the word choice uh, in the Android ecosystem. Apple calls it fragmentation, it. right? And it versus somebody wrote us a letter saying, "Please stop using the word fragmentation. Please start oh, using the word choice." And we had a long conversation dichotomy. about this on our last episode, which controlling I thought was really good. companies like media companies call it fragmentation. Consumers call it choice. Yep. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. There yes. really needs to be a website, though, like a single serving website that's like. What is the best Android phone right now? dot com, and it's like I want better battery life, and then just gives the answer. I would want you, a bigger screen, would, it's, and, you it's, know, because honestly, I couldn't answer that question. I mean, I, I'm so yeah. Glad you need I like a check boxes. Well, that's what all about Android's all about, yeah. right? And did no, did we show the uh, the video from uh, the Best Buy Saturday Night Live video? No, did we show that? Uh, the Verizon one. We did. We show did that. show this. I mean, the Verizon one, Jeff. We showed that. Yeah, 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 a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Verizon. That's why. That's why our show got pulled down two weeks ago. So. I hate you too. Um, Passion. Uh, anybody who thinks I'm a Google shill, I hate you, YouTube. Just talk to him about YouTube. Well, or a bunch of other things. Anyway, uh, I don't think I. To be honest, I don't know why Google's making a tablet. I guess they feel that just as with the phone, they make need to make reference implementations. Yeah. Um, Show the way. Yeah. Uh, yep. There are. According to Andy Rubin, 12 million Android tablets sold. I find that extraordinarily hard to believe, and it's the case. Eight million of them must be Kindle Fires. But he's not, I don't think he's counting Kindle Fires in that. Because um, it's not an Android yeah. brand. It can't what did you guys right. think of the, of the Asus Pad phone? I didn't uh, see that one. Oh, that oh, is one of really my picks. Oh, it's really amazing. Oh, is that okay? No, go for it, Jeff. So you is should it, talk about it. I love this, is, I love is, this concept. It's phenomenal. It's, a, it's an amazing video, yeah. Um... Uh, I'll go to the. Phone. It's a 4.3 inch smartphone. Yes. So not super big. It's, it's on the biggish side. Um, however, it converts to a 10.1 inch pad phone station. So you dock it. You dock now, it. Now, how is this tablet. different from the Atrix? Well, you dock it into the tablet. It powers the tablet, and then you can actually dock the tablet into a um, keyboard. a keyboard. So you've got all three. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so it's a, and it's, it's running ice cream sandwich, and it's actually got a pretty vanilla skin uh, on on the phone itself. So really, it's like a babushka doll. But even better, the stylus yeah, that comes with it becomes <laughs> your your handset, becomes your receiver. 
So, oh. so you were, so you get a, you could buy a stylus and then you could use the stylus to say hello. What do you, stick the stylus if, in your ear. Yes, I don't understand. you do it. You you use it. It's like the, the world's thinnest uh, little phone. Yes. It's hard to feel very masculine when talking with it, but. <laughs> So you wait a minute. Oh, Hello, this thing. Hello. This thing sounds insane. So like, you're like, saying that's why it's the awesome. stylus? This thing. It's a bigger go, stylus. Hello. Yes, when it's docked into the tablet, because you can't answer the phone, right? Oh, if it's docked in the tablet, so well, but we got a stylus for you. Can I get a little rubber band or something to strap it to my head? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a Bluetooth like ear thing? <laughs> Is there a little... No, it's a real stylus. Oh. I got to find a picture. Oh, real that's stylus that you hold on the phone. But you it's... know what? This is exactly what we're talking about. That oh. Asus, because Android's free. Yep. And it's open, can yep. develop the craziest, wackiest stuff. And this is good for everybody. This is wonderful. I wish Steve Jobs was alive just to hear what he would have to say about this thing. Oh, he'd hate it. It's got everything he doesn't <laughs> he would want. He despise this yeah. thing. <laughs> he would but that's fine. You know what? There's a, this is a, we live in a world where there's room for Steve Jobs Absolutely. And, and Andy Rubin. And I think that I that's what we want. That's called choice, not fragmentation, no yes. matter what Apple wants us to call it. I would just love to know what word he would choose. Uh. Appalling. <laughs> what, what, Crap. What, what, I what I love about this is that you also saw there's the, there's the thumb drive sized um, uh, Linux box, right? Yeah, the Raspberry Pi. Right. So a lot of interest in that. Wi-Fi, in Bluetooth, all this stuff, right? Yeah. Well, so, so there's a new view here that you carry the computer power oh, it's around. A big style. You can plug it into lots of different things, right? Yeah. Well, I think what, what it's saying, There's really... There's CEO, and he's using the stylus now. What it's saying, really, is that all the innovation, all the excitement is happening in mobile, uh, that your mobile phone is your computer. And so it makes perfect sense, if your mobile phone's your computer, to give, exactly. it, give you ways to make it, you know, work with a keyboard and a bigger screen and all that stuff. You Which know, there are a number of people who have done uh, kind of just random experimentation using a Bluetooth keyboard... HDMI out of uh, almost any uh, Android phone into a 27-inch screen. And, you're, you're, you you know, so I think where Google really needs to go is with Android and make it more of a compatible desktop operating system. And I is that what ice cream sandwich, is that what jelly bean, is that where they're going? Is it... Is it something Isn't that, that where, where Windows 8 is going? It is Windows where it is where Microsoft's going. Is absolutely, mobile brought to the desktop before Google did it. That right? was that was of course the big story this morning as Microsoft put out its consumer preview of Windows 8. Uh, I did not get up at six in the morning to watch, <laughs> uh, but if anybody watched Steven Sanofsky, well, you know, we'll talk about it tomorrow on Windows Weekly. But uh, um, I think this is I think this is all exciting. This is uh, this is what you want. You want. Let a million flowers bloom. So, many will be failures as the, uh, who was it, the Samsung guy at Mobile World Congress a couple of days ago who said, well, yeah, the tablets, that's not been so good. They didn't sell so well. That's yeah. great. That's fine. And Samsung's a big enough company that they can take the hit and try something else. The, I think the Note, uh, and all, all indications are the Note's going to be a big runaway hit for them, right? I think that's where they're trying to focus yeah. at this point. Because it's a now fablet. Well, yeah, and they also introduced a 10.1 version of that as well. That I don't get. I don't know. Yeah. How is that different than a, than a, a Galaxy Note? To, uh, to, uh, I mean, a, a Galaxy Tab. Galaxy tab. Well, there, it, does, it does a few things different. There's going to be split screen, so uh -huh. you could uh, see, uh, browse, and then also take some notes. I mean, they're, they're positioning it a little bit different. <laughs> 3.7 million. <laughs> Okay, I'm moving on. I don't want to do any numbers. No more numbers. Just in case Jeff has dibsed it. No, you're fine. And actually, uh, I guess Andy took down the tweet that you wanted. <gasps> he yeah, did? it's not there anymore. He took the party tweet down? <laughs> well, let me see, because uh, it says, what sorry, it that say? page doesn't oh. exist. But maybe that's just a bad link. Oh, no. Well, yeah, because how can you kill a tweet? You can't kill a tweet. Yeah, you can. Well, you, you can delete kill a tweet. tweet. You're, 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 Are you kidding? No, just ask Rupert. No. Fun Android party in Barcelona last that was night. The one. Thanks yeah. to everyone who joined, and to Timo Moss, Calvin Harris, and Goldie Rocks for the grooves. What's wrong with that? I, th I thought it was going to be something more salacious. No, I yeah. just wanted to say he was having fun. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> He's okay. having fun. Hey, you know what? You go to Barcelona and you don't have fun. There's something wrong with you. Uh, Barcelona, the parties, though, start at like 3 in the morning. You're supposed to, you're supposed to go home. After a long day, take a nap, eat at 10, and go out at midnight, right? I think that's how it works. Oh, man. Uh, I'm too old for that. 
<laughs> like part of me that sounds really fun and but need... most of me is like oh no that's why they live on paella uh i am excited about this htc one they have three models the x s and r it's a, a quad core 1.5 gig i'm sorry there's two of them so if you get the at&t forget already. i said quad core Unfortunately, the, the AT&T will be merely dual 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragons, but that's because the Tegra, the uh, LTE chipset and the Tegra don't go together. But the Tegra 3 will be in the, U, uh, the universal version, so you'll probably want to get that. Unless you want AT&T LTE, this is right. You need a spreadsheet because mm -hmm. if you want AT&T LTE, you can't get quad core because this will be a 720p, 4.7 inch screen. So it's kind of somewhere in between a phablet and a phone. It's a phonablet. <laughs> you need a Leo glossary in this. <laughs> um, it will have uh, Sense 4.0, which looks pretty sweet. So this is this is going to be an ice cream sandwich phone with yes. with the new HTC Sense on top of it. Yes, uh, looks pretty good from what I saw. Looked great. We and it's got the Beats. Is a fap top. And it's got the Beats. <laughs> we got the Beats. Can somebody get me my Ting phone? Is there anybody around? I want to show Hello? off this Ting phone. There, and there's nobody here. Oh, it's it's in the drawer where I keep my phones. <laughs> It'll only take an hour it's to got, find it. It's got, it's, 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 just bring me all the phones. It's in the drawer in the left. It's uh, I don't even know how you're going to know which is which. Anyway, oh my God, this is a new actually a new advertiser uh, doing Android phones. They're very excited. We'll talk about that in a second. It, let's see what else. Uh, the ho, the uh, uh, Hua, Huawei. That's how you say it, right? Huawei. That's correct. Ascend D Quad, the fastest phone in the world. I put it in here because it seemed impressive and quad core That's it. is the buzz. Quad, quad, <laughs> quad, quad, quad core. Um, but see, this is uh, also 720p. Everything's 720p, except now we're going to see 1080p is next. Mm -hmm. You're going to, there are phones that are going to be 1080p. Get ready for that. Um, so, but what, it's the D Quad is the internal processing power a lot of the first impressions i've read have been pretty uh, look how the reviewers look how says, ugly it is it's too I know. thick I know it's it ugly, looks like the fastest phone in the world <laughs> doesn't it kind of looks like it was painted with beige paint people seem who people who saw it seem to be impressed that's the only well, reason anybody who's there. impressed by speed will be impressed but the point is there are 100 new handsets android handsets at mobile world congress the one with the projector built in even yeah the samsung pico projector built into the top so you do your PowerPoint from your phone. Uh, and, of course, and this is where I think they made a mistake, Nokia announced a phone with 41 megapixels in its camera. But it's, it's 41? running... 41? It's 41. I didn't make a mistake there. That's the actual 41. <laughs> and it's running Symbian. But it's running Symbian. Not even Symbian, <laughs> not even Symbian 60. It's running an old version of Simi. And I think that what they said is, well, we've been developing this phone for five years. That's what we had uh, five years ago. So it's not going to be, it's going to be a very strange phone. It's also thick. It's got to be, it's clumsy. And when you take the picture, it, it shrinks it down to eight megapixels or five megapixels in order to get it uh, looking good. So in order for it to fit on the phone's <laughs> yeah, right. memory. It's actually, you know, it's a bigger chip than in most point and shoot cameras. So it is, you know, and there's some merit to the it, it should be a nice camera. I don't know who would buy it, but I guess somebody's serious about camera phones. Isn't there some sort of point with megapixels where the more that you have, it, it doesn't matter as much? I thought yes. it was around 10 or 12. It is. Um, well, it's a, it's a, that's a complicated, long conversation. Yeah, probably not for Twig, but I, I, I thought that at the point at which Here's you hit the a issue. level. It, the, really, the chip size is what really matters. So you have two choices as a chip gets bigger. You can either get the pixels bigger and have them receive more light and get, be more accurate, or you could increase the resolution, which is what Nokia did. But the problem is now you're beyond the refraction limit of the lens, especially a little lens like that. So you're not going to have a very crisp image. So they knew that, you know, you would never take a 41 megapixel besides the size would be huge. So what they do is they shoot 41 megapixels and then they squeeze it down and that handles all the refraction issues and so forth. And gotcha. so you get a good 8 megapixel. It's very, very crazy. So AT&T decided <laughs> that uh, they're going to have, let's see. This is this is this is a little bit complicated, but but would it, you explain really, this? Because I I read yeah. it and I don't Here's understand the deal. it. Here's the deal, right? 
Basically, they're double dipping is the deal. Yeah, they are. So what, what happens is you, Google is paying for the bandwidth to get to the Internet. You're paying for the bandwidth to get from the Internet, right? Right. And now AT&T says, well, we're going to create this new thing. It's like an 800 number call, so we can convince you it's free. And what it really is, is the worst violation of net neutrality you can imagine. Because what it says is you can, a, 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 a app maker, a developer can buy the privilege of your app's bandwidth not counting toward the user's bandwidth cap. So you can use this product uh, with impunity. Right. So what, what at and gets paid a third time. So you didn't by just pay to, right, by the developer, right, or the developer controller, right, whoever controls the app, right? And, and so it's fairly evil because they're trying to convince you, oh, this just makes it free. Now you don't have to worry. It's, when you're using that app, you're not worrying about your cap that we don't really admit to you that we have. But isn't that good uh, for consumers? No, because what it says is now this is, this is, this is the exact violation of net neutrality. That means that only ah. apps that have the money to pay for this privilege will get this kind of coverage, and the rest of the apps will more and more and more will be discriminated against as uh, they say, oh, sorry, you're not using one of the special apps. You're so, using one of the crappy apps. So, for instance, we couldn't afford to do this. So, right. And we wouldn't want to do this. It's stupid. So, right. uh, Twi we will be discriminated Sorry, against. This if you watch Twit, it's going to go against your, you know, 100 kilobit bandwidth cap or whatever it is. Right, you but you could video. watch. You could watch if you'd prefer AOL. They yes. they wouldn't exactly. charge you. Yeah, that's horrible, isn't it? Uh, horrible. I'm telling you, the world's going to hell. In I got there was a fight with somebody on. Debbie Downer this week. I May you. I show you a photo of an ice cream sandwich? That makes me happy. <laughs> oh, you know what? If you had one, I would take it. All right, I'll go buy one. Later. That would cheer me up. Okay, I'll buy one. Eat one, Leo. Needs I need one. one. They have those at Google I/O. Uh, yeah, maybe they will. And and what else were they going to have? All oh, those glasses that we can wear and see what's going on for real. Yeah, yes. they might have some jelly beans. Android glasses and ice cream sandwiches, I am so there. I would love to see some research on how much this iOS uh, debacle has hurt Google's reputation. And I wonder if, you know, Google has been historically a very good brand, but I wonder if that brand is getting tarnished by all of this information, you know? Do you think real people, in other words, are paying attention? I don't think real people know about this. They don't care. About the third-party cookie thing, about yeah, the, the yeah, iframe? yeah. Yeah, well, no. I think it's starting to spread. I think you see it on TV. I see, I see these supposed tech reports on supposed TV news, and you know, well, watch out, they're tracking you. Um, and and then the, you know, the anchor comes back and says, "Well, that's mighty creepy, uh, Sally." Yes, yeah. it is. You know, it's it's happy. Yeah. Talk. It's, it's at the level of happy talk now, and this becomes the accepted uh, narrative. And you have a place like the Wall Street effing Journal um, doing this, and, and you know. I, 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 Listen, the, the actual reporters who are doing this, I'm not, I'm not uh, besmirching their ethics in this whatsoever. But I think that they're falling into a company line here where Rupert Murdoch hates Google. And it comes out with his but arguments that Google as, is a pirate. As and, Kara and Swisher pointed out, Julia Angwin is not doing Rupert Murdoch's bidding. That's what I'm point. saying. No, she's not. But, but, but. The higher-ups are happy to promote this. I watched a scene in Davos. I wrote about it, and I didn't put it up but because uh, it just seemed kind of old and, and, and inside baseball, but, but it's relevant, where uh, the top digital uh, editor from um, Wall Street Journal was at the Google uh, briefing at Davos, and he just started uh, channeling Murdoch about piracy. Well, go look up a movie. And, and, and Eric Schmidt just went into it and said, well, what, yeah, why don't we look up Mission Impossible? since that's what Rupert had complained about. And it was just parroting exactly what Murdoch was saying in Twitter and elsewhere. <laughs> and it was a top editor of the paper doing it. Wow. So, yes, the attitude does seep through. Now, I'm right. not even questioning that he doesn't actually believe it, but it, it, there is a company line there. And it's a company that – there's the report is out today that or Chase Carey, uh, COO, I think it is, of, uh, of News Corp., floated the idea today, and I've been saying this since last July, of News Corp spinning off its newspapers. Mm. Only 20% of uh, their, I think it's profit, uh, uh, maybe it's revenue, is revenue, I think, is newspaper-oriented. Uh, mm. uh, it is an entertainment company. It is a paid content company. That's what News Corp is. 
And so he doesn't really care about the ad business anymore. And that's part of the reason that he's shooting spitballs at it. Sorry, I, I absolutely agree. I, 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 Julia is a wonderful person. I respect her. She's smart. She's not by any means doing this, but I think it's falling into, you know, out of out of uh, uh, orders from on top. It, it's too subtle for that. It does seem happening instead. somewhat self-serving. Oh, very, very. And and the, and the the path here is Murdoch himself trying to slam Google at every opportunity. So back to your question, Leo. You get enough of that happening from companies like this being read and repeated by happy talk bozos at TV and newspapers, then it does have an impact right. on the brand and on discourse around large technology companies being after you. Right. And that's going to affect all of us geeks. Well, it already has because uh, the Wall Street Journal no longer lets you read the entire story from Google. The first click free program has moved on. I noticed this too. Uh, this is an article by Danny Sullivan in Search Engine Land. That when uh, you look up or try to read that Wall Street Journal story about the uh, Google workaround on the Safari privacy settings, you didn't get the whole story. And uh, it used to be if you get it through Google News, you click and it would get the whole story. No, you have to you have to pay for it. You have to log in and pay for it. Um, and apparently. Uh, this is something that's been going on for a while. Vice President of Corporate Communications for the Wall Street Journal says, as a strategy, we hold back a few of our top stories by not having the full story crawled, which limits selected articles from being available via first click free. We've been doing this since last summer. I did kind of notice it as a strategy to encourage subscriptions. I couldn't figure it out because sometimes it would work, sometimes not. Now, I have a Wall Street Journal subscription, so... Uh, I was forced to remember my password and log in, but um, I just click away. What do you do? I just click away. I'm like, oh, oh well, I guess I won't read that. Else. I'll read somebody else's paraphrase of it. Yep. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think For the me. London Sunday Times still has my two pounds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a it was such a nightmare process to buy because I was trying to read the story that they wrote. That really now you you want to. You want a good example of this, uh, Jeff. The London mm -hmm. Sunday Times, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, published mm -hmm. a story on Sunday, which made me very suspicious, saying that uh, everybody, yeah. Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, everybody, all the apps on your, on your Android phone were uploading <laughs> everything that you knew to their servers. All and your texts, everything all your else. texts, yeah, it. texts. They were listening to your YouTube was turning the camera on and watching you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and what Facebook. What's about it, Leo? You're right. Is that it got quoted, but you couldn't read the story. Couldn't read. And I tried to pay the two saying. pounds, and I couldn't figure out. I had a feeling when I read it. Oh, you know what? This is not any research, or this is them looking at the permissions. Yes. In the app, saying, "Well, they ask for permission." YouTube. Ask for permission to use your camera, so they must be using your camera. And that's the story, I think. But I couldn't find And I tried to pay the two pounds, and they, I couldn't. And I never. So finally, Somebody Facebook. Somebody needs to send these people the oatmeal comic, uh, the Game of Thrones. Yes. I mean, yes. I, I use Game of Thrones as the example, yes. but it works for everything. Someone in the chat room asked if I click away from the New York Times after the first 20 freebies. I actually pay for the Times. I have a subscription to the yeah. Times. So uh, I don't have a subscription to the Journal. So I. I not only yeah. pay for the Times and the Journal, apparently I now pay for the London Sunday Times. <laughs> I don't know how long this two-pound charge is going to continue. Um, Facebook had a response which essentially confirmed what I thought, which right. is, no, uh, we, were do we were doing a test with some people, but we do ask for these permissions. The Facebook Android app does not read your text messages except in... Uh, in a very limited case where the people were informed ahead of time, this is a beta test of uh, some software we were trying in the Messenger. It was app. News Corp again. And it was. I mean, that one was really, uh, well, the, 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 the best case you could say, well, that was just trawling for clicks. Yeah. Um, right. Worst also, case, it was part here's of the a insidi campaign. Here's, here's how I know this happens. The insidious part about a mogul company is not that the mogul ever tells anyone what to do. He doesn't have it's to. The underlings try to please right. the mogul. We always knew what Paul Allen wanted. I mean, the only time when I when I worked at News Corp, Tom Merritt got, knows oh, yeah. where his bread is buttered. Let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't hear a kind word about Apple in this show. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, now people well, was, are going to believe that. They are. They are. Yes. 
And Tom's going to confirm it because he's going to say, oh, I can't say that. Oh, no, <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> no, Tom will say uh, intentionally say the opposite of what I think just to get my I think he will, goat. Which is good. Yeah. When I was TV critic at TV Guide owned by News Corp, uh, I actually was never told anything. I was, I was given far more interference at Time, Inc., and I actually used this as, a, as an anecdote to, to defend Murdoch when he bought the Wall Street Journal and defend his lack of editorial control. The one time I was told anything was that uh, Leah, that um, Rupert was a big fan of Moesha. <laughs> Honest to God. And, and if you don't like Moesha, Jeff, it's okay, but you better be prepared to defend that decision. <laughs> really? No, I'm serious. Really? That is a best story. I that makes me really <laughs> happy. And Jeff, if there's anyone who could defend his his dislike for Moesha, you are the guy. I think you. I actually could thought it was cute. It was fine. It was when I was whew, Moesha's okay. <laughs> wow. Well, I can't log into the New York Times, so I'm just going to skip this next story. They use cookies, Leo. They use cookies. <laughs> I've, I've apparently forgotten my password. I was going to read a story from the New York Times about Google's new privacy policy, which, as you mentioned, Gina, goes into effect tomorrow and may be a violation of EU rules. But apparently I don't have my password. I must have exceeded the number of clicks because I've never had this before. They won't let me in. I hate paywalls. But kids, get ready because that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get soon. You brought it on yourselves, people. Let me uh, let me take a break and make some money because God knows we're not. We only have a limited amount of time to do that, and then it's going to be all over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, skip this ad. I don't care. Damn kids! If you skip this ad, you might miss the baby polar bear later. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, wanted to lighten man. things up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, I do, do not <laughs> skip this ad. ad. There's baby polar bears ahead. I, they come. actually did this on. Live with Kelly today. They did? They they said, stay tuned. Coming up, leaping animals. Stay tuned. Coming up, baby <laughs> polar bear digging. <laughs> Where'd you get that? That's good. Well, you got to thank Veronica Belmont for that. Oh, oh look at how cute. Look at her. Now, she don't, don't do it gets even better a little yes. later on, right after this ad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, we talk, we bitch all the time about how cell phone companies work. And, uh, and you know, there, I keep saying if somebody would do it right, they would, they would kill. Well, it makes sense. The folks from two cows, same folks that do hover and, uh, Elliot Noss, a great guy had the same thought. He thought we could do a new mobile service. What we're going to do, it's based on Sprint. They offer 4G phones, Android phones through Sprint. It's called Ting. <laughs> this sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. Ting.com slash twig. Ting.com slash twing. Twig. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Bing, bang, willow, ah, ting, tang. This is an amazing new way to uh, get your cell phone service because it's Sprint. Now, uh, of course, you're going to have the same coverage map as Sprint does, same 4G, but they have a pricing model that is unique. So uh, what they've got is they've got, let me show you the, the whole thing here. They've got this account dashboard that at any time you log into your Ting account, and you could see exactly how much data, how many minutes, and how many texts you're using. They bill megabytes, minutes, and texts separately. You, when you sign up, you say, I want this plan. I'm going to have this many phones. Actually, I could show you this. Let me, let me go here. You could say, I could say, I want this many phones. So I'm going to say, let's say I have a family plan, four phones. That's the base price of $24 a month. And then, um, oh, this is for you to enter in your own. Uh, let, me, let me let me go to the plans here. This you could. This is also a nice pricing um, pricing thing where you enter in your current price. So then you say how many phones you want, and you say do you want extra small, small, medium, or large, or extra large or XXL plan? Choose whatever plan you think you're going to use for minutes, for messages, and for megabytes. You know any just. But here's the beauty part: if you don't use it all. They give you a refund. <gasps> Yay. They don't give you rollover minutes. They give you your money back every month. You're automatically credited the difference at the end of the month. If you use more, you're billed at this rate, not some inflated crazy rate. So really, this is just a suggestion. You know, pick what you think you're going to use because that way you can figure out what it's going to cost. This would be $69 for 1,000 minutes, 100 messages, a uh, 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 gigabyte of, but let's say, oh no, I'm going to use a gigabyte and I'm going to do a thousand messages, but I'm not going to do that many minutes. 
There you go. $92 a month for four phones. Four phones. Oh. Oh. And if I use less, I, I get a credit back. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That they're Canadian. Does that help? Awesome. This is a U.S. <laughs> this is a U.S. Awesome. company, but they're from Canada, and I think that's the issue. They're, they just don't get that profit thing. <laughs> <laughs> there are no penalties. There are no premium prices for extra data. 4G phones. This is the Ting phone I'm using. It's a nice HTC phone. Slider. This is a slider, but you don't have to. They have all kinds of phones. Um, they're, they're, this, if you've been looking for a better data plan, a better plan on your phone. Um, in fact, this is so cool. Like, Here's a tweet from somebody a couple of days ago. My Ting phone bill was $22 last month. That's $100 less than AT&T was. A new, a new customer, family of four, actual usage across the four phones, 2,387 minutes. Wow, we must have teenagers. 4,227 4, messages and 429 megabytes of data. That's a lot. All of that, 244. On Ting, I'm sorry, that was on AT&T, it was 244. On Ting, it was $103 a month. Business, too, by the way. You get as many, you know, this could be for your whole business. A marketing firm in Boston says... We plugged in six of us together. We got $12,000 to savings a year. So there's a no-wait customer support line, same as Hover, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email support. Uh, they've got blogging. They've got Twitter. They're really, you know, they're a bunch of geeks, very social media focused. Look at this. This is a really nice phone, by the way. And, and then they have data access? They have, like, um, data devices as well? Yeah. So this is a data device. This is a Android uh, 2.3 on a, on a um, HTC phone. Yep. Yep, they've they've got, got a Novotel MiFi 2200. They don't have like the oh, oh you mean like the the MiFi yeah, cards? Mi yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They got two of them. The they Huawei. don't have the latest greatest phones. Like they don't have the Note, and that's you they know what? The that's Huawei not their fault. G. That's that's yeah. a carrier lock-in, unfortunately. Um, but they have the Sanyo Zio, the LG Optimus, the Samsung Transform. Now, when you get the phone, the phone, uh, this is the HTC Detail. It's a little more expensive because you because you're not getting the subsidy, but it's less than a full price. Uh, phone. Can I just get a, a SIM from them if I have the phone? Uh huh. Wow. Prices range from one hundred four dollars to five hundred forty four dollars to purchase a phone. You can buy it right on the website. So just go to ting dot com slash twig. Well, oh, they're not SIM. They're they're Sprint. They're Sprint. That's right. Yeah. Ting dot com slash twig. You'll save fifty dollars on your device right off the front. So we do have a special deal for you. Ting dot com slash twig. Tell your friends. I think. These guys deserve to be rewarded. When I when Elliot showed me this, I I've known about this for six months. When he showed it to me, I said, "You're gonna get your ass kicked by AT and T and everybody else. We're gonna try to run you out of town." He said, "No, we're all we're already up and running. This is this is awesome. This is great. Um, yeah, this, this is support seems too good them. to be true. It support them for doing it right. Right. Well, what this does, you know, what's what's in any model. If if you worry about what big corporations are going to do with the internet, and, and, and we should worry about you that. Should, you should. There's a few answers. Yes. One is to have open source competitors, right? So so the fact that Firefox exists is what enables Chrome to exist by pressure, but also means that IE didn't take over the world. And the fact that Ting can come along and say, you know, you can do a phone company right, bozos. That puts the pressure on otherwise. And that's what we have to do. The entrepreneurial technologists have to create this countervailing pressure to the idiots. By the way. Yeah, agreed. No early termination fee. You're month to month. You cancel at any time. Wow. No additional charge for tethering or hot spotting. All the phones do it. Oh, Jeez. that's great. Three-way calling, free. Caller ID, free. Tethering, picture and video messaging, free. Voicemail, free. So this is a really, this is a remarkable service. And for a business, this would be a really good choice to have multiple uh, phones. Ting.com slash twig. And just, you know, look at the plans. Do the savings calculator. You get an idea. The, you know, Elliot's a great guy. He's, he's one of those guys that you meet that you go, you, he wants to change the world, you know? Just really exciting. I just love it. And, um... Yeah. Just uh, back on the uh, polar bear watch. Oh, uh, is that live? I, it's. They said it was live. I'm not quite sure. I just kind of explore. We see somebody come along and club it over the head. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I promised to bring it back Jeff. to the polar bear. So the way we're... things have gone in the show so far, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if I saw a polar bear clubbing. That that is <laughs> no. no. This is explore.org. These are live webcams. And Polar bears, panda. Oh wait a minute, they got pandas. <laughs> Giant pandas, baby. 
Look at the look at the live cams on the panda <laughs> reserve. These are all live cams. Wow. I don't know what's better, the polar bears or the pay only what you use phone plans. I'm not, <laughs> I know. I, like <laughs> I know. I hope you didn't skip the ad because you might have missed something really good. Oh, the panda bears are sleeping. No, there's one eating right Look there. at little, little. Oh, this this looks like the San Diego Zoo. Eats, shoots, and leaves. That might be. <laughs> Yaoshin and Lulin. I was, that was so cool to see those up close. And they're so cute with their little pot bellies, but don't get close because they'll eat your face off. <laughs> okay thank you for this little uh break i feel much much better I, yeah well if you know if you ever feel down i will i will go back to our friendly polar, polar bear, bear. Okay. Shoot, 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 baby polar <laughs> thank bear. you eileen you're welcome shoot, baby polar bear <laughs> just say polar baby, bear okay okay baby, i'll bring baby back. polar bear <laughs> you wish you were in kansas city Everything's up to date in kansas city they've got fiber running at gigabit speeds um here is a depressing video of Google installing high-speed fiber optic. Actually, this is an ad. Skip that. How do I skip an ad? You know, there's too many ads on the internet. <laughs> You're skipping the ad? What? You robber? Here's the polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay. At least you can see the face now. Oh, it's cute little polar bear. It's going to turn around. We're going to see a Coke ad on the side. The of it. service will offer download speeds up to 100 times faster than those. This is from the BBC News. That's why there was a little ad because they really got to monetize. <laughs> Living online in Kansas City. Gigabit per second. Anyway, you can go to watch this at bbc.co.uk. Wouldn't that be nice to have something like that? I don't know why they're making modem sounds. That's crazy. I wondered that too when I was in the mood. What? The, what? Modem? No. Mind how no... slow it used to be. Maybe that's it. We're going to notice more as a, as a real All right. We're not going to watch this because we didn't watch the ad and we don't want to be pirates. Uh, Eric Schmidt said that people people have actually contacted them saying they want to move to Kansas City just because of this. And somebody oh, in the wow. audience said, I want to. Of course. This is the best thing uh, that uh, we've tried. You know, we lobbied, Petaluma lobbied. Every town in, in, the, in the country tried to get this because they knew if you get it, you're suddenly like the place to live. All right, so what do you think? Uh, this has been a little little battle going on on the Internet over Google+. Mm. Uh, Comscore and others uh, say that uh, Google Plus visitors are not, it's not, it's been, Comscore said an average of three minutes a month on the site but that's isn't that bogus statistically because that's that's all the lucky lose who came in the proper statistical should be how many it may be a bad number how many people come back regularly and for those how many how much time do they spend what they're averaging in is dead accounts who came in and said i'll try this leo said to uh yeah, a lot of them i'm sure yeah um that's, facebook that's... has uh, the on the average about uh, seven hours six yeah. to seven hours every month but it was another Wall Street Journal story going after oh, you're Google. Right, man. I'm just saying. There's, there have been a lot of them, haven't there? Tons. Tons. Now, it, when you sign up for a Google account now as a fresh, brand new user, you automatically get a Google Plus account. No. Or, sort of. You do not. The first thing they do is they push you to Google Plus. They push you to Google Plus. And say, make a profile, be a pluser. It's, very, it's a very hard sell. It's a very hard sell. So, okay. Hmm. So, it's, so these numbers are kind of, could be bad just because they're pushing, you know, if I want a Gmail account, uh, right. and, but I wind up with a Google Plus account, but I just use Gmail. I mean, I'm, you know, essentially considered a Google Plus user who abandoned my account when that's not, you know, Google kind of did this to themselves a little bit and that yeah, because they right, push Jim. you to make a Google Plus account, you know, because they have such high signups, they're going to have a lot of dead users. Well, let me, let you me know, create an account. Okay. Create a new Google account. Your Google account is more than just Gmail. Take it all with you. Share a little. Work in the future. So, you know, they push their products. Yeah. So, so Google Plus visitors spend an hour. So a visitor, I guess, is someone who has been to plus.google.com. Mm. I mean, I, there's no doubt that Facebook has higher usage. But my, my view on Google Plus is kind of skewed. I mean, to me, it's still a very active and delightful, like, nerd salon. But... I don't, you know, I think for regular people, you know, they're not seeing their friends and family on Google Plus yet. That's true. I'm spending, though, a lot more time on Google Plus than I do on Facebook. 
I've been more in yeah. conversations there. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I've been seeing, Jeff, you've been a lot more active. I, Google Plus, I get kind of hot and cold about it. I, I do so, too, so, yeah. I get I get really hot about it. I'm like, this is great. The conversations are great. But it feels like, compared to Twitter, it feels like a lot of work because the posts are so much, you know, yes. meatier and because the conversations go on so much longer. I just feel like it's much more of a time commitment where with Twitter, I just can kind of quickly scan uh, and kind of get more out of it. Hey, look quickly. at this. This is when you sign up, you check, they have a box to check. Google may use my account information to personalize plus ones on contents and ads on non-Google websites. So that's what they were doing on iOS, by mm -hmm. the way. So maybe mm -hmm. you agreed to it and you just didn't remember it. Well, but, but Gina would say, I'll speak for Gina here, they still did they, something they should sneaky be clear. to get around the Apple clear. thing, yeah. the iOS thing. Uh, right. I can't. Right. I'm, I screwed up on the, uh, I hate captures. Oh, the captcha. I can't read that. What is that? Would you guys help me? What is that? Cure, cure. O I got O O N D S C I. Oh, you're good. No, yeah. Is that an I or an L? See, I can't tell if that's an these. N or an R. Either. N or an R, an I or an L. Place, oh. place, sound again. You listen. <laughs> oh, go away! I give up. <laughs> Prove I think, you're not a robot. That sounded like this omen. <laughs> That was the, the devil. No, Google, you prove you're not a robot. You, you prove you're... You are a robot. You're a Python script, and you're asking me to prove I'm a human? <laughs> Crying out loud. Oh, and now my browser's functionality's turned off. Please turn it on, polar bear. Look at this. Look at this. Google's just doing a constant Turing test on the whole world. <sighs> Well, anyway, you don't have to go sign up for a whole cat. I was just wondering if... By the, the way, this is interesting. Cookies. Look at what Google recommends as a setting. Under accept cookies, select only from sites you navigate to. They're recommending turning off. They're recommending first-party cookies only. Yeah. Isn't that huh. interesting, huh? Well, I mean, they own all their properties, so... <laughs> well, that's somebody pointed out, you know, all they had to do was make that double... The thing was, it came from DoubleClick. If they had merely ma made it come from... Uh, Google, they wouldn't have had to do any work around at all. It's very strange. It's all... It's well, but in the New York Times, it has New York Times cookies and it has DoubleClick cookies. A double click cookies, I assume, are considered third-party cookies? I'm very confused. Yes, they are. Here we yeah, go again. It's based on yeah. Frozen. Those are third-party. They're both Frozen and so, I've got cookies turned on and well, it still won't let me log do the n tip number <laughs> and tool. How's that? <laughs> Eileen is our savior this week. Thank She's God. keeping things moving along. So She's impressed. Here we go, Gina. Gina, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> tip of the week uh, is a really simple one. A new change in Gmail. Thanks to HTML5 and Chrome, Gmail, you can set Gmail to be your default email handler, which means that next time you go to Gmail, I just got it a couple of days ago, it'll say across the top, do you want Gmail to be the default, your default email handler? If you say yes, anytime you see uh, an email address linked on any web page, you'll click on it and it'll launch Gmail instead of launching mail or, you know, your crazy Windows client. So it basically lets you use Gmail as kind of your default, default client. It amazes me that it's 2012 and this is like a really hmm. exciting new thing, uh, but it is. It's, it's, it's always been a pain. I've kind of trained myself to copy and paste links into Gmail, but now you can just click them. And, uh, and you can do the same, and there's instructions for setting Gmail to be your mail handler in Firefox and Internet Explorer as well. But it works kind of right out, very smoothly out of the box in Chrome. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Jeff, your number of the week. My number of the week. Well, Eric Schmidt said in this speech, and I'm glad we didn't get to this earlier, but I'll get Leo fired up again. Um, <laughs> more that, thing, more stuff Schmidt says. Uh, Google uh, products are blocked in 25 of the 125 countries in which Google does business. Wow. And the scarier one that he said that now 40 nations censor the net up from four a decade ago. Holy cow. This is the trajectory we're on. I wrote a post this week uh, that you should read to the tune of um, Pink Floyd. Uh, saying to leave our net alone. And, and, and the basic thing yes. that's going wrong here, the basic thing going wrong here is that there is a, a growing presumption <clears throat> of you know, let's talk of regulation that the internet's broken. It ain't broken. That's what Eric Schmidt said too. It's not broken. So don't fix it, please. <laughs> leave our net alone. We don't need no regulation. Hmm. Uh, yes. Hmm. The internet is not broken. 
And that's the fundamental thing we've got to get across to people is that that's what is allowing this push to regulate under the guises of piracy, privacy, security, decency, indecency, pedophilia, uh, and citizen and, 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 and civilization. Yes. By countries all around the world and upper governmental organizations like the EU and the UN. A Wall Street Journal uh, thing we mentioned last week is this, is this, this talk about, about, well, maybe we should go ahead and start regulating so we don't have the UN do it. No, it ain't broken. Don't fix it. Cool. That was an excuse, a number as an excuse for a rant <laughs> from a strange pink man. <laughs> <laughs> He's lavender now. That is weird. The camera keeps on readjusting every time. Yeah. So I'll see sometimes it'll see the background is, is anyway, yeah. the background. Yeah. Sorry. I'm like strange and pink. We I'm fixed actually, him, and now he's weirder looking than he was. I'm fixed in more ways than you know. Yes, you are. <laughs> Is Maps GL something new? Do you know, Gina, if that's something new? I don't, I don't think so. I, th I thought it had been around for a while. So uh, it's using WebGL to turn your Google Maps into these incredible 3D... Uh, 45 degree fly-ins and stuff like that and uh, john came and said have you seen this it's really cool so i thought in honor of john i think we've seen it before yeah but, I mean, it's been uh, around uh, for a while but still yeah, that's new well anyway in that it's case around, but... forget it forget i even mentioned it i Why like webgl ad blocker leo <laughs> yeah really let me show you how to so you can avoid all these ads on the internet let me show you how you to block show them collusion is what you should show should i show all, collusion all that track. all right it's a firefox uh, tool right <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't know we want to recommend it though based on our earlier conversation. No, I'm just going to show you how set Leo off again. how open-minded I am. This is a life hacker article. Collusion <laughs> for Firefox shows you who's oh see but now Google won't let me see this either. Who's tracking you on the web in real time? Chrome says, "No, I'm sorry Leo. You can't read that. Here's a polar bear." <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> anyway, great. I'm going to wrap it up because I got nothing more to say. Well, who's on triangulation this afternoon? Uh, Robert Llewellyn. I'm so sorry. Poor Bobby. Bobby Llewellyn, if, you know, if you've ever watched Red Dwarf, he plays Crichton, the guy with the rubber face, the robot. He is also very famous for his carpool podcast and others. He's just the greatest. Uh, Bobby Llewellyn will be our guest via Skype. I wish you were in studio, but it would be via Skype because he's calling from Great Britain uh, at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern this afternoon on Triangulation. TNT is coming up next. Jeff Jarvis is the author of What Would Google Do in his brand new Kindle single, Der Herr Gutenberg. Uh, and you can find Gutenberg the Geek uh, on on your Amazon. Just, you know, Amazon Gutenberg the Geek. Boom, you, it's 99 cents. 99 cents. If you're a Prime user and a Kindle owner, it's free. You're kidding. Oh, free. I didn't even Money know library, that. library, free. So that's the I deal with singles, free. too, is for Prime, they're free. What a great deal. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for being here. Buzzmachine.com. Keep fighting the fight, you pinko. <laughs> I keep doing it to Pink Floyd songs. I know, yeah. <laughs> Leave that we net alone. No regulation. <laughs> Somebody has to we cut that together. We don't need no nerd control. <laughs> Google. You know, we're going to go see the wall. Uh, in a couple of months, right? All of us. May. In May. The whole studio. Why don't you guys come over? Really? We'll take you. Oh, that's it. I'm coming up for we that. Already, we already spent a bunch of money on tickets. Might as well just add two more. We got great <laughs> seats, though. Gina Trapani is the author of <laughs> nothing. I'm not going to mention that wave thing. <laughs> the complete guide to Google Wave. Oh. Polar bears. That's it. Oh, I'm, I'm, put, I'm putting an ad blocker on. <laughs> go to, go to smarterword.org and see everything she's up to. And you can follow her on uh, Google Plus as well. It's Gina Trapani. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all Thank for you. being here. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google.